Article 28. I'd entertain a motion to waive the reading of Article 28 in its entirety due to its length. Moved by Mr. Pluff. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Pierce. All in favor of waiving the reading of Article 28 in its entirety, please raise your voter cards. Thank you. Down cards. Any opposed? Uh, Article 28. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard on Article 28? Uh, yes, Mr. Moderator. Mr. Pierce. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> basically, what we've done here, we've gone through the whole uh, solid waste ordinance, and I don't know if any of you folks have ever had the grand privilege of doing that, but there was two or three sections. One section was off and never, never land in relation to the first one, and we cons tried to consolidate that and also clean up some of the things that were definitely out of date and tried to orient the trash uh, ordinance to reflect today's environment, recycling and so forth in a nutshell. So that's basically it, bringing the whole, art, the whole ordinance up to date and consolidating it and addressing recycling. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. The flogging will continue until morale improves. The flogging will continue until morale improves. That's what this thing says. We will continue to beat you about the head and shoulders. We will fine you. We will inspect you until you bend to our ways and start doing the recycling. That's the ass backwards way of going about what this, this bill is, this uh, ordinance is trying to accomplish. This is something that should be done by incentive, where if you, you've got a choice about paying for what you give out, you put in your blue can, and not paying for what's in the green can. If that is where the incentive is, and you've got a choice of looking through every way you can to save money, and it means something in your pocket, then you will recycle instead of throwing it away. The town does that, and that's what the town's trying to do here. They're trying to save money by what they're paying to the landfill to take our trash up, because we dispose of it by the ton. And we pay for every pound and every ton of trash that is taken up to turnkey landfill. And what the town is trying to do here is to have less of that, because recycling does not cost as much to do. The problem with it is, We've got a system right now where you can't tell what the costs are to collect this trash. So it's easy to just say, put out an ordinance, fine everybody, and we'll, we'll make it work that way. As long as we have our trash collection costs buried in the tax base, the only thing, and I've talked with the public works director about this and he agrees, that the only thing that he can tell really is how many people you have and how many trucks you have that go around to collect both the trash and the recycling every, each week. You can't get into any more detail. You can't tell who disposes of what, who recycles what, who puts what in the trash bin. So now we propose that we're going to have somebody inspect our trash. And who pray, th this ordinance does not say who will do it. It says the town will do it. I'm sorry, but I do not want the guy that's hanging off the back of the trash truck to be looking into the stuff that I put out on the curb. This is a matter of personal freedom, personal liberty, personal indivi individual freedom, and we should not be subject to unreasonable search and seizure. We put that out to be disposed of, not to be inspected. And we should have the right to have put whatever we want in there without people looking in to see what's in there. It should be appropriate, and there should be an incentive to do it right, not a penalty to do it wrong. You penalize people when they have broken a law and they've done something wrong. There's nothing wrong with making a mistake and putting a piece of cardboard in the trash by mistake. What are you going to do? Uh, make them go back in and dumpster dive and get all the stuff out of there so they can put every little piece of cardboard in there? Mistakes are made from time to time. But the way you do that is hit people in their pocketbook. Set up a system where instead of putting it in everybody's tax base, take all those costs out of the tax base, give everybody the, the proportionate reduction in their tax rate, and then set up the system where the town bills people for what they actually throw away. If you want more recycling, give them the choice of paying for putting it in the blue can or not paying put it in the green can, 
And then you're going to get well beyond the, the idea of, well, I, I'm going to recycle because it's the right thing to do. Of course, everybody wants to do that. Nobody wants to trash the earth, not purposely, not that bad. But if you make a, put a monetary incentive on it, by gosh, you'll see that incentive rate go up to a level that it couldn't do otherwise. That has happened in many, many, many other communities all over the country. That's the way most communities do it. Most communities do not bury their, their uh, trash collection charges in a tax rate. They simply don't do it. It's not a practical way to do it. The other thing that I find a little problematic in here is, uh, let's see, they're, they're going to get suspended. If they don't comply, they're going to get suspended from curbside collection. Wait a minute. As long as it's in the tax rate, they are paying for a service. You cannot continue to tax them and, re and deprive them of that service that you're charging them for. The town inspects the right to reserve materials. I don't know about that. One other one is the, is the fines. Let's be a little bit realistic about what we're fining people for. My God, up to $500 because you put the piece of cardboard in the wrong can? That's a bit dr draconian. That's very draconian. The vast majority of towns that do have any kind of penalty, they make it a nuisance penalty. 25 bucks, 30 bucks, something like that. But to say that the guy on the back of the truck is going to make a determination whether I'm going to have to pay $100 in fine and be deprived of my collection services, because the town is not willing to put in a financial incentive program instead, that's the backwards way to do it. You don't run a town by using oppressive techniques. You don't hit them with heavy fines when you're not willing to clean up the way you do the collection and bill for the collection. We should be doing this as an incentive, not as a penalty. I urge you to vote this down, and let's try it again with, a, with one that is well-founded and a program that has some, some common sense to it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 28? Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Corrine Baker, 244 Exeter Road. May I remind us that this is currently on our town ordinance list. What we passed a few years ago was something that said the town of Hampton shall have mandatory recycling and shall be uh, those who are not compliant will be, can be um, charged up to a $500 fee. So this um, change in ordinance redefines it a little bit. I have a couple of problems with it um, on, under B uh, where it says um, they will not be required to uh, collect anything that's over the weight, the cart weight capacity. That's a little uh, nebulous. I would say to be specific on that, if you want to say 50 pounds or whatever, um, that would be more specific. Um, also, on the materials placed within the recycling collection cart cannot be bagged in any form. Um, sometimes it does make sense to put small pieces of paper into a larger paper bag uh, for c to put into your trash so that the little pieces of paper are not all over your, your street. Um, as far as the right to inspect and exclude materials, you know, there are some things that we need to uh, dispose of separately, such as car batteries or paint cans, and if someone should would throw that into either um, a trash or your recycling containers that should not be picked up. Uh, right now what we're doing is if there is a somebody that's overfilling their barrels and they're obviously opening open, um, the trucks cannot pick that up if the top is not closed. So that the, the carrier, the driver has to come out, lift that up, put it in, which is what we're trying to get away from by using these special trucks. Um, so there's a reason for all of this. We, I'm on the recycling committee and we have been working toward this type of a ordinance on what do we do if people aren't complying. 
We know we can, we have signs, you know, right in front of my house, this town has mandatory recycling, but what does that mean? Because it's nice to say people are doing it for the right reason. They're recycling whenever they can. But people aren't like that. You know, I've talked to people who are living in condominiums in town, and they are paying taxes to the town, and because of their condominium rules, they are having private collection. And so they're saying, why should I recycle, even though it says mandatory recycling, why should I do that? I'm paying the taxes, I'm not getting my trash picked up by the town. So it's, you know, there's uh, some other questions about trash and, recyc and recycling. Trash is big. It's big in this town, it's big in every town. And we're trying to rein this in so that um, people do recycle when they can. The, the rules change all the time. We have a new company that's picking up our uh, recycling this year, EcoMain, and because of that, we've changed what can be recycled. And so people are not sure, can I put this in? Can I put my pizza box in the recycling if it has grease on it, or should I put it in my trash? And we're not talking about putting a $500 tag onto someone who throws a, you know, a can in the wrong place. We're talking about mindset and that if you can recycle, you should recycle. So I do support this with a couple of changes in it. Um, I don't know how that goes, how we go about doing that, <laughs> making amendments or I don't really have a, a written amendment. Can you tell me how we do that? You have to have a written amendment. <laughs> All right, this is the first time I've seen this. Oops. Okay, well, uh, I guess I'd have to support this. Yeah, I guess support it. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Baker. Ms. Uh, Latimer. I don't know. Some people think this is the year of the horse. I think it's the year of the trash issue. Um, from two aspects of dealing with this, one on the budget committee and one is having served in the last couple of years on the recycling committee. I think the biggest part of this is we, again, already passed an ordinance that made recycling mandatory. That's the word. What does it mean? You have to do this. When you have to do something, unfortunately, there is almost always a penalty for not doing it. In this case, if you don't do it and your recyclables end up in the trash stream, you're paying more for your tipping fees. You absolutely all are, all right? And you all have control over it. I'd like to hear a little bit more discussion about that sometimes. We have a contract right now that worst case scenario is we don't pay any tipping fees for our recyclables. But we do pay $75 a ton rounded off, or has it gone up? A ton for that everything that goes on the trash side. You want to give yourself a break, find more things to put in the recycling end. But on the other side, we've made it mandatory. Whether some of you chose it or not, the voters voted it to be mandatory. So how are you going to enforce it? And to me, that hasn't been determined yet. All right. I see penalties in here right now. If you read the ordinance that exists, it says flatly up to $500. This is an improvement. But I'm listening to what Fred is saying, and he's right. It's like a, a penal system for the amounts that you have there. It should be more like a parking ticket. All you want to do is nudge somebody to say, hey, you know what? Look at what you're throwing away. You're over the line, and you should be doing it a different way. And then if it continues, then you should hit them with larger fines. The first one shouldn't be $100. So I'm not in agreement with that. I never have been. I've done the research on the recycling committee. That research was turned over to you. All right. I've been against it from day one, the larger fines. That's just a piece of this. 
we also never resolved who exactly is going to go out there and inspect and how that is going to be done. The essence of what you're trying to do here, I applaud and will tell you, this is not an easy job. This is one of those cases, and we'll have another one later on today, that we jumped into this without total research, and I'm talking about the mandatory recycling. We jumped into it without total research on what this was going to cost us. And then we got one foot into it and we went, uh-oh, and then we thought we were going to be off to the other side of the state for where we were going to send everything, and that was another uh-oh because that didn't go through. And then we were stuck with what we were going to do next. And some of us went and actually toured facilities that could not only deal with what we have for trash right now, but trash into the future. We think we found that in Eco Maine after viewing some of the others. This is a big deal, okay? This is a big deal, and to me, this article is going in the right direction, but I would have to tell you, I'm not confident that it's totally complete till we iron out a couple of the areas. And the biggest area, and I've been before all of you, I've been in on committee on that, is how you would effectuate the inspection. I don't think that's resolved clearly enough for me to be for this article. Am I for the essence of it? Yes. But I still think it needs to go back to the drawing board. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Latterer. Sir? Oh, you're, you're first. Thank you. Just about afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Ashley Meyer. I live at 25 Malton Road. I've been a resident of Hampton for 34 years. In my opinion, humble opinion, this article is unenforceable. It cannot be enforced because there's nothing in this article that I have seen that provides a method of adjudication that is impartial. We are in a democracy system that requires three branches of government. Enforcement, which is the executive, legislative branch, which happens to be the selectman, and third, the judicial system, which is impartial. You cannot be fined for this and have no way or accused of violating this ordinance without a way of being adjudicated to appeal that accusal. That makes this unenforceable at this point. You can't mandate something, mandate people do it, and then not have a way that the individual that's accused of violating the ordinance be able to have it adjudicated fairly and impartially. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. Ms. Moody. Art Moody, <clears throat> something uh, Arlene said, well, we, we don't pay for recyclings. We go to Echo Maine with recyclings? Yes. That's what she stated. Uh, just for point of information, uh, I read in the Portsmouth Herald uh, that the legislature in Maine is considering a fee on such in order to give it to cities that are hosts to incinerators, like Sanford has a wheel of one. So that may not be long if they pass that. It may not be uh, free for long. Thank you, Ms. Moody. Ms. Wolsey? Yes, sir. I'm going to walk fast. I want to propose an amendment. The amendment is relative to the enforcement section E, and we do have the ability to enforce. And I'm referring to the uh, adjustment that the Board of Selectmen made to amend Chapter 420, Article Roman 3, Solid Waste Management, Section 420-14, Utilization of Facility, Subsection A, Refuse. Item 4 in that part of the ordinance states that the State of New Hampshire is, comes under State of New Hampshire, and it says, we will amend by removing the last sentence in the subsection that reads, quote, Excluded from this provision are materials removed by the raking of the sand on state beaches. Such materials will be accepted and deposited at a special location and charged at the town's cost of disposal. So the intent of the Board of Selectmen, as this article is written, is to now prevent the state from bringing in the mountains of, quote, beach, rake, beach rakings, which were uh, cluttering up our transfer station. But I would like to move to amend the article further, to take it one step further, and uh, clean up a situation that has 
pestered us for years. I want to move to amend section 420-14, utilization of facility, subsection A, refuse, number four, state of New Hampshire, by removing the entire paragraph and inserting a single sentence as follows. The state of New Hampshire shall henceforth not be allowed access to the town transfer station, Department of Public Works property, or any other town facility during the daytime or after hours to dispose of any or all waste, trash, and recycling generated at state beaches, including Hampton Beach State Park. In other words, what's left now, if you follow the uh, amendment that's being proposed in the article here, the state will be prohibited from bringing the beach rakings in, but they will still be allowed to use the town facility. And I say to you, the time has come to let the state operate Hampton Beach State Park independently, to let them take care of their own costs, to let them dispose of their own waste. We are overusing the transfer station, even though we're charging seven cents of whatever for the uh, poundage that the state brings in, that doesn't compensate our public works department. I don't care how you cut it. We're tying up manpower, we're overusing the transfer station, and we are getting nil for compensation from the state. Mr. Bean has very eloquently made the case for the amount of money that we should be compensated for for the state of New Hampshire. So I'm just laying this out. If this does not pass now, I will see to it that this appears on the warrant next year. We have got to get out from under allowing the state of New Hampshire to flood us with trash from that beach. They have land, they're perfectly capable of hiring roll-offs and cab, a cab to drive them away and getting rid of their own waste. I don't think there is any other state park in the state of New Hampshire that imposes on the community in which it sits the way the state of New Hampshire imposes on Hampton. Moder Mr. Moderator, I would ask that you rule whether or not um, this amendment changes the purpose of the article to a purpose that was not warned to the public. That was my, um, my concern, Mr. Nichols, as I was reviewing this, is that what you have in the uh, article that's been warned is a section that merely talks about the materials removed by raking of the sand on the beaches. And I uh, have in front of me an amendment that adds a new purpose, which is an entirely different and new subject matter. Um, so I, uh, in my ruling, uh, which is subject to this body, would rule that this is a new purpose, um, that it's not permitted as an amendment uh, because it is a new purpose. And the test that I use is that um, if this had been uh, uh, put on in the first place, would you have different people here today than who are, are only looking at stuff that's coming out of the sand? I think it's an entirely different topic. I know it's a topic that uh, the town has wrestled with before, but to put it in here, I'm going to say at the last hour, under the, uh, under the sand provision, um, I think is uh, inconsistent with the whole concept of, of being warned and being able to be here and the proper people to, uh, to uh, or the people who care about that. So that's my ruling, is, is not to accept this amendment because it is a uh, new purpose. I accept the, the ruling of the moderator, but I will say that this will come back up again in years to come, particularly next year. Yeah. No, I, it, it, it's certainly as, a, a, a as long matter as it takes. Of, of great concern and discussion to the town, uh, mm -hmm. but it, uh, it should be warned and, uh, and dealt with in, in, uh, in that fashion. Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'd like to offer an amendment to this uh, warrant article. Uh, it, it has two deletions. The first is to delete 420-13.1D, which is the right to inspect and exclude materials. Delete that section, right to inspect and exclude materials in its entirety. If this needs to be visited, it should be visited in a more balanced and a more eco in a more appropriate manner. Uh, this is uh, uh, going a little bit too far inspecting the materials. Uh, the, the other deletion is the next to last paragraph regarding fines. The, this paragraph says to amend chapter 420 by deleting the words and numbers up to $500 and substituting $100 for the first offense, $200 for the second, $500 for any subsequent offense. 
I think the pre preceding wording gives a lot of flexibility. It gives the, the Board of Selectmen discretion in what to do. But, um, and so if we delete all of this, then we just would leave it the way it is and keep the discretion with the Board of Selectmen. They can establish an appropriate fine based on the severity of the, of the offense. Not $100 for the first little offense that may come up. Once it's an offense, you've got to fine them. You don't have any choice on that. This way it'll give you the, the discretion to be able to do that. So I offer those, uh, the amendment to uh, take care of both of them. Could you? Stay at the podium for a moment, Mr. Um, Rice. So I'm going to take your um, the last amendment that you offered. It's at the it's that paragraph to amend Chapter 420, yes. Article 3. So yes. you want to take out the fine schedule, and it's your understanding that the ordinance without that proposed fine schedule would allow the selectmen to impose a fine up to $500, yes. but they aren't uh, bound to do 100 for a first offense. Or, so you want to allow the selectmen to continue to have the flexibility to fine up to 500 but in a manner that they see as appropriate for the uh, for the That's correct, Mr. Okay. Murray. That would be discretionary. There are some people in this town that just can't afford a $100 fine, even if they do screw up. There should be some discretion in there, not a mandatory one. 100 for their first offense. The people, that's going to be a heavy burden on them. All right, so that's one part of your uh, proposed amendment. And the second part is that section that says the town reserved the right to inspect materials. Correct. But not open bags placed. Correct. Do you want the entire paragraph out or just the... Um, the, uh, the entire paragraph because it all ties together. If they designated a specific individual to do this, that might be uh, that was qualified. That was a was an elected or appointed or licensed official in the town to do this. Fine, but this gives the right to put anybody. Joe Jones, the, the 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 guy on the back of the truck, or somebody they've hired off the street at minimum wage to come in and make determinations on potentially fines in this. So I, I would like right. to get that whole thing taken out. All right, so the Rice Amendment, I'm going to look for a second in a moment, but so we understand it, is to take two paragraphs out of this proposed Article 28. Is there a second to the Rice Amendment? <coughs> Seconded by Mr. Emmerich. Uh, anyone, we've heard from um, Mr. Rice. Is anybody else wishing to be heard on the Rice Amendment, which takes out the right to inspect and takes out uh, what I'll call a, uh, a tiered fine schedule that is uh, without discretion. It just depends on first offense, second offense. Seeing no one, I'm going to ask for a, uh, uh, a vote. If you're voting in the affirmative, you're voting in favor of the Rice Amendment, you're voting to delete those two paragraphs from proposed Article 28. I'm going to take a vote, Mr. Cushing. Uh, is excuse me? Is this, is this vote divisible? No, the, the, he's presented his amendment as taking two paragraphs out. All those in favor of the Rice Amendment to delete those two paragraphs, raise your voter cards. Down cards. All opposed. I declare that the Rice Amendment has passed. Do we need any further discussion on Article 28? Seeing none. Uh, I'm going to move on to Article 29. 